Okay. Yeah, so today I'm gonna just give you the big picture of the meta programming um, uh, section. So first the question is what is meta programming? And um, yeah, I think it's not using this meme recursively. So <laughs> um, meta programming uh, was defined um, in the in the in the book um, as um, the code that can be uh, inspected and then modified uh, pro programmatically. So like code that can create more code. And um, later in this section, we will discuss a bit more on, on this non-standard evaluation, which is um, important to, to have this meta programming because this basically means that um, the, the many uh, instances in R can be evaluated um, in a different way to the, to the standard and, um, and therefore then they can uh, be used to, to um, generate new, new code. And um, especially um, in the tidyverse, then there, there is this tidy evaluation which is implemented through, through the functions of Arlang. And um, uh, there is, I think, a full book on, on tidy evaluation. Uh, and also, uh, I was watching earlier this video that Sham posted uh, on, on the tidy evaluation, which is basically what, I, what I'm talking about <laughs> today. So, um, and what we will be looking more in de into detail. Yeah, so question, please. Yep. Um, but can you go back to the slide? Mm -hmm. So when we say meta programming here, in R, tidy evaluate, um, meta programming is implemented in R with the concept of tidy evaluation. Am I right? I think not necessarily. Um, I, I think tidy evaluation like takes the meta programming uh, to the like to the extreme. <laughs> Um, but the meta programming uh, was uh, uh, it already exists, I oh, think, okay. before the tidy. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, but I think it's it's so, just like mm -hmm. um, tidy tidy evaluation was uh, putting this to to to, to exploring this um, meta programming concepts. Okay. okay, so tidy evaluation is exploring meta programming concept yes I, that, that's what i what i believe uh, i mean I, I i believe also that this would be discussed a bit later on, on the other chapters okay yeah. so um yeah the first idea that um is coming here with the meta programming is that code is data and basically you can capture the code um and then this capture code will be known as an expression. And this would be the next chapter, um, the chapter 18. Uh, and the two main functions that, that we can uh, use with this idea of the code is data is expre expression, uh, exp XP, and then NXP. And for instance, uh, we will have uh, like the, the expression and, and then we can capture, um, uh, so, so if we only use expression, it will do a lazy evaluation and it always is gonna only evaluate the, the X that we are typing here. But if we do an expression, uh, um, it will not do the lazy evaluation, but it will rather evaluate the the function, the, uh, the, the argument that we are giving to the function. So that's why we see that these two functions um, have different outputs with, with the example of A plus B plus C. Um, and this uh, concept of capturing data has two advantage because um, advantages. So we can, um, after capturing this data, we can then modify it. Modify it um, so for instance, we can add new arguments or we can remove arguments. Like in this case that we add to this um, 
expression. Um, now, now we add the, the number three and then we can remove the, the second element. And this, um, so this works a similar, uh, it's, it's a similar manipulation that we can do with lists. Yeah, um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here the first line of the code, um, f of x is cos one and y equals two. What is the meaning of f here? I thought it's creating a vector and we use c. What is f? F would be like, um, like basically, uh, like like the the main uh, structure, the the main function. I would say. Um, and, and yeah, it do, it does create this structure like a list, uh -huh. um, and and that's why you can then add new things similarly to a list. Ah, okay. I do presume that um, we use okay. So C create a vector, and F create what list? I, I mean the the the, ex, the expression or the capturing will will basically convert the the. Um, this um, code into some structure that is similar like a list because that's the the second concept that the code is a tree and um, so the code has this structural shape and that you can visually observe now with this lobster package um, so here I mean you have a similar function uh, f um, and, and here you, you see the F and then you um, you see the two arguments that are passed A and B and but they belong to the to the main structure which is F and um, it, this can also generate like other uh, uh, like this concept of the tree uh, can also be helpful to visualize when you have um, embedded uh, functions into um, uh, uh, embedded expressions into other expressions. Like for instance, here inside of F1, you have F2 and F3. And, um, and this not only uh, can uh, help to visualize uh, the, the expression, but also um, it can be uh, it can contain the, the operators, like in this case, um, where um, a, a tree can be uh, also formed from the from the from the elements on the expression. So, um, so we have the the plus as as another main node of of this tree, and. Um, and yeah, I, I, I was just, just checking the the chat. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks, Hannes. Um, so then the, the third idea of this is that code can generate code. Um, and this is uh, mostly, so now having, having this tree structure, you can also um, sort of generate, generate a tree um, using the the different arguments, so like um, especially with this function, the call to, if you give a sequential set of of um, arguments, the, then this will create uh, like a like a like a function. And then uh, if you give it, um, if you if you now instead of giving giving the this only the then the um, simple arguments, but you also give some operators. Now it will create uh, um, a structure, uh, a function that also has its, these operators. So the, similarly to the one that we saw before. So it will create this tree. And um, and the, the other one that is also very important, and I think that Cham was also excited about, uh, which is the, the bank bank or unquote, that now this um, allows to, to evaluate uh, the, uh, and so, so to capture the, this uh, expression and then to, to be able to use, use them in, in new functions. So now um, 
instead of this being interpreted as uh, as 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 as, as, uh, as x x um, uh, or basically x plus x without the precedence of the of the parentheses. Now using this bank bang, uh, this will allow to um, understand that we wanted to give it here the, the the expression and that this will be the first part of the of the new of the new expression and and the second part will be the this x uh, y plus y and that um, this would be evaluated first uh, all that is in the parentheses and then um, the the division and um, then this can be of course um, be used to 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 send it uh, into the functions so now uh, this would allow to for instance uh, pass a variable in, into into a particular uh, function uh, and this variable can be either um, just uh, I mean this this can be just a single we see that we just giving a single x will we'll give um, this sd of x over mean of x but if we give it a, a, a expression then we will have x plus y over the mean of x plus y so um, I think in, in the video that also what uh, Sham was posting earlier, there is this nice example on on how to use this for um, for ggplot, for instance, to to create some functions on, on the ggplot. Um, and I'm not sure. I don't know if anybody of you knows what is the difference of this with the with the new. Um, uh, curly curly that is, exists in the in the in the tidyverse because I think also curly curly does something like uh, what bang bang sort of does but um, I don't know um, if some somebody knows exactly the difference. My understanding is that they were the same. Uh, the, the same. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Hug, embrace. Mm -hmm. embrace. Yeah. The like curly embrace. Curly. No, like yeah, the double curly. Uh -huh. Yeah, the curly curly. I think it's called curly curly. <laughs> um, double brace. No, that, yeah. It's. I think it was a word for it. But I think my understanding is that it's the same thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I can type it. So basically, like like this, but um, but uh, but yeah, if I I have used this one mostly uh, inside because I think that's how you can do um, an, an a, a certain evaluation inside the, the tidy functions. But I, but I, yeah, I think that curly curly does both steps at once. Mm -hmm. So like in the example on this page. Um, if you were to put the curly curlies around uh, um, xx and yy, I think I'm going to get this a little bit wrong. But uh, mm -hmm. um, so, like in the in the tidyverse code where I've used both methods, um, mm -hmm. you have to do. I always forget the name of the function. It's either it's not in quo. It's something similar to that. Maybe it is in quo. So you, in the beginning of your function, when you pass in like a you know, let's say a, you want to pick a different y variable for your plot, you pass in um, that y variable um, either already quoted in your parameters or you have to um, enquote it um, in your code and then the bang bang will will um, do the evaluation do, will do the evaluation for it whereas if you just use the curly brackets you don't need to do that in quote step because it does both at once and I'm, I'm oh, missing okay. a little bit of the detail there but yep. I think that's the difference okay okay that, that's clear Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I will. I will read more on that. Yeah. So the next idea that we have here is um, and the evaluation runs code. So now, when you evaluate something, um, you also need to um, provide the where the environment that that something is uh, being evaluated. So. Um, 
so eva, eva, the function eval can uh, also take um, the or it needs um, to be more precise it needs the the environment so in this case uh, we can see the given uh, two different environments the the results um, would be um, different of on the same uh, evaluation of this expression and uh, this can be used uh, to overread functions and also to um, refer to variables in a data frame. And this would be um, also one of the chapters, in, um, three, I think chapter 19, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but the, the idea of, of the environments is, or thinking about the, the environments and where this ha is being evaluated is also very important. Um, and, um, and this is also one of the secrets of, of the plier. So, because the plier also can, uh, uh, uses the idea that customizing eva evaluations is possible with functions. So, um, if you want to look what the player is doing, um, you will see that uh, it's basically doing an SQL query. Uh, so basically, it's executing the, the code in a in kind of like a, like an SQ like an SQL um, uh, environment, and then and therefore it can do this um, queries of the different. Um, uh, so, so that like like SQL quer queries for for the different functions like filter and select. And um, evaluation um, it also looks for for these variables in, in the in data frames, which I think is also something that I I I never thought about, <laughs> about uh, that it was possible to do in in R and and. In a, um, or like how, how to do this task. Uh, so for instance, uh, now you have, um, you, can, you can instead of giving the, the, the environment, you give a data frame and, and over this data frame, um, the, the eval tidy will uh, then evaluate the, the expression that is given. So in this case, it's a data frame that it consists of two, two different variables and X and Y. And about the tidy will then take every each X and Y that are in this data frame. And, um, and this also can work um, more, more detail with, with the N-Express, but um, the, there is a warning, so basically this can be um, very ambiguous, and um, I believe in the in the chapter twenty or in um, uh, it would be discussed uh, what is the solution to to work properly with this, um, which um, again is uh, through the uh, these parameters and the the oh, prefixes I think they call it environment and and data. So at the end, I think then we will need to sort of define the, the environment. And um, the, the other of the important, uh, so, so the solution to, to this problem of uh, how the evaluation is very highly uh, uh, linked to the environments is um, the, the quashers, qu quashers. So, Basically, um, the problem with the function that we saw before is that um, it would have uh, it would be linked to the environment that is written. So, for instance, if now we give a new a and we evaluate this function, it will still take in the a that is within the function. And um, the the way to solve this would be uh, using this. In quo, which is um, 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 a new, a different type of e evaluation, which now bundles the expression to, to an environment. And now, if we try to run this function again, we this function will not um, take the the 
A from the from the environment within the function, but rather it will take the A from the global environment. And now we will have um, a, the result that we would have expected. So 10, uh, so adding 10 to, to this numbers on, on the function. And um, I think this is also part of the chapter 21. And, um, and yeah, we will see more on the details of the NQO. And that's all that I have, yeah. Um, I don't know if there is a, a ah, thanks Hannes for putting the details on the curriculum. Um, yeah, so, um, uh, I, I want to go back to the previous question I asked the first, mm -hmm. um, the one where we have that f as um, as a function, because like I run it like I think is it specific to the book f is defined as a function because I run something like this, um, mm -hmm. it says this an error. So, um, Hani says this is undefined function. So. I don't know how it will work. Um, no, it, it doesn't work. It's because S only looks an expression. So it, it doesn't matter. If, if you run it, it won't work. It, it's, it's not um, how I should say it. For, for displaying, it doesn't matter if the function exists or not. And because um, it's not evaluated, it, it doesn't tell you an error because it doesn't matter more or less. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So then, if you try to put it in the in the expert in the eval, then it will not. Uh, it will probably give you the error. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So you cannot write it like this, sham, like you posted mm -hmm. in the chat, because it does not exist. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You, you could catch it in an expression, then it works again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I can catch it in expression, but <laughs> I see, yeah. Okay. This and then yeah, Magic. and then then you can can draw it into the S. It won't work because mm -hmm. it, it thinks it thinks uh, X is a variable name and it shows you more or less nothing. And there comes our um, double bang more or less. If you catch it in a double bang, it it shows you again the tree structure because more or less so, it it shifts in the expression. So, um, Hannes, why do we create? this kind of fun, um, function, in what sense do we need to apply specifically? I mean, you had a question which actually did use stuff like this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, so for myself, what, where I use it very often is uh, simply in a function and if I throw in um, um, a name, a string, but mm -hmm. I want to have it in the function, for example, as a new column name or the field mm -hmm. of it. So that's that's my main case where I use it. Okay. Um, except, except I'm, okay, so maybe I'm just doing this kind of old school. I never really caught up to Arlang. Um, I always do, so in my function that takes in a string that needs to be evaluated, I always do eval as dot name thingy. <laughs> so I like change the class of my string to be a name and then eval as name, given that it is, that thing is loaded in my either function environment or global environment. So 
Um, can, can you share? I, I think that? that's like a, yeah, so I just like, this I mean, is you, how could, I, you could share your screen, probably. Oh. Oh no! It's if 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 <laughs> like, your desktop is full of of files and and a chaos, we don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna see about like fifty browser windows. Um, it, no, it's always something like like um. Uh, okay, so uh, this and then. So where blob is holding is, is usually like a list or another function or another, uh, or just a variable or a data frame, like anything, but I turn it into a name and then evaluate it. I think this is old. Like, I don't think this is the more modern methods of how you evaluate, um, like do non standard evaluation. So my question is like, if any of you are familiar with this syntax and how I, how I should be correctly doing it. That makes sense. Like, or more modernly doing it. I really don't know what the code piece does. So essentially like the as that name just converts the class. Okay, hold this thought, Hannes. I'm gonna find the script because I did this very recently and I will find you the script where I did this. Continue to chat amongst you. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. So I have one that I recently converted from the old style to the, uh, or look, I think Hannes is showing the same thing, but um, the uh, curly, the double, the uh, curly, curly, converted it from the old, old style with the bang, bang to curly, curly. Wait, but you have both there. All right, now I want to hear about Hannes' example. Uh, you're mute, Hannes. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, so actually the double bang bang here can also be replaced with something like this. Uh, and I think it also can be replaced with something like this, but I'm unsure. Um, and, and that's my, my use, use case where I use it. So in, in the function, I draw in um, a string, I generate out of the string uh, a symbol, and then I can use it everywhere in here as, um, as a uh, group by or as, yeah. And, and here, what I do here is it, to use it simply as name for, um, for a column. So, yeah. Don't know if that makes sense. Wait, what's the last thing you did there? Uh, I, I used the, the name. So the actual, I think that's what Lila what, wanted to say. I used the actual name of my bar. So if it's, if um, I can, if my var is um, test more or less, then it cr will create here a, a column, which is called test. But here it will reference um, to the test column itself. Does that make sense? Yes. So and you have to use it in conjunction with the bang bang. So you have an as dot character. Oh no. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. So the as dot character that you're doing. So you have a, a variable that is an actual named object, and then you're wrapping it in the curly curly to diffuse it, yeah. and then converting it into a string as dot character. This seems like very overly complicated. And then you're giving it with the colon equal sign operator, I forgot what it's called, but. Um, I don't know.
Yeah, I was trying to find, there's a good, very short blog post on the curly curly that I was trying to dig up. Um, okay. So I can do something like this. Does that make yes. sense? Yes, I understand this. So you're okay. you're unquoting the curly curly, you're unquoting X. Yeah. And it's gonna now just say as a named object species as it would normally would, as you normally would. Yeah. Um okay, so in my in I want to know what what is the right way to do what I was do what I was talking about earlier. I don't think it's good practice what I was doing earlier. Did that work? Mm. Yeah, that doesn't work. Hmm. Oh, I'm I'm stupid. Yes. Yeah. So this Hold also on. works. Be Whoa. Be because I, I think this had something to do because so this only works, I think, in the diverse concept, because actually what's behind the scene is doing here is I think the Q package. And you need you need the 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 how is this called in English? The divided Col by thing? A colon. Uh, colon. Colon. So you need the colon. With, without that, the stuff before don't get uh, evaluated. Huh. I've never seen the, the curly braces inside of the And, and what, I, what I did was more or less this. Um, um, what's in the arrows? Uh, so I did this. Okay, hold on. So select stable length, mutate, species is one. Ah, okay. So it, it's just, it's, it's the same as this. That's really cool. That's so really on that, cool. And that's the old style, more or less, I would I would say. Because what is the old style? The bang bang? Uh, oh I, I mean I'm not sure if bang bang is uh, in base art. I think the only thing which is in base art is evil. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that that's oh. okay. So okay. I'm Uh, I'm a little behind. What's the colon equals operator? It's more or less that that the thing before is an expression or something. I I'm unsure what, what how it really works. Okay. And I am not sure how I can find and help because I don't even know from which which package that stuff is. I guess Arlang, but. Yeah, that'd be Arlen, I think. Is it Arlen? The curly, curly and bang bang? I think so. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I mean, okay, there, there comes the help file, which I posted also in the chat. So that's, that's probably a good read. I didn't do so far. Okay, yeah, it is, it is Arlen. It's a, um, it's a, the, sorry, the, the colon equals is, an ex, is a function called QQ underscore show. Yeah. Oh, no, and here, wait, no, we're sorry, we're back to the force yeah, documentation. Yeah. We, need okay. a gloss, we need a glossary for this stuff. Yeah. Can I, I'm still okay. While we're on this subject, can can you guys help me in my code to make it like Arlang instead of base? Okay, so this will help me understand better. Um we can my bajillion things. All right, so I have a function uh, here. So this function- You'll probably takes... need to make it a little bit bigger there. 
font. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot it. I wanted to. Uh, is it better? No, are you still squinting? Good. Okay. So I have a function and it takes in two arguments. It takes in some sociodemographic factor and a county variable. The first thing I do is I take factor and I as dot name it and eval it because factor what gets passed into my function is a list of um, census variables. So white, black, Hispanic, these are just from a table from the census. And so, but it's stored into something called median income, okay? Um, so, and so then median income gets passed here and then Yeah, so now I don't know what to do. <laughs> How do I, th this works, this works, but I don't know how to do this the right way. Does, do you guys know what I'm saying? Like, would I be doing instead, so if I turn on the browser and my function and I hit this and then I actually run it, So where is var getting called after you assign it? I missed that. I don't have a function. Right? Are we talking about the function oh, itself? Um, yeah. So just we you do the uh, eval name as name factor and assign it to var, but where does var get called down below? Oh, so in my actual API call here, okay. so it's because var is a, is a list. It ends up being evaluated as a list that I defined down below all my variables. Oh, and so, okay, sorry. I was just missing that line that your cursor is on. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, so then that gets passed into the API. Okay. okay, so then if I go here and I go get vars, <clears throat> on uh, med ink and we t we pick county 117 i don't know what county that is we see that um so back of right now just holding med ink and then if i run that line oh shit oh i'll just record it sorry Yeah, I get the same error message. <laughs> Are you just trying to pull what? the names out of the list? Because that might be why I think. I'm just trying to get the list. I don't know if it's not necessary anymore. I don't know what happened. Like, this was definitely working a month ago, and I have to <laughs> run this analysis. Oh, a month ago is a long time. So I can love happening stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, in theory, I technically don't need this because if it's already going, I must have changed something. If I'm already passing in a list as my function, I don't have to evaluate it. Okay, but let's just say, okay, let's just say for, hold on, we make this that. Then this should work because in a global environment, medic is a list. And this now holds a list of three. So instead of having to do this base our way, would I just do, I can't modify while well, I'm in the browser. But I guess here I could do var would be, curly curly of factor. Oh. I mean, 
I mean, the whole concept seems a little bit strange for me because you are you actually what you are trying to do is to grab from the global environment something which is not in the function. Yeah. The 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 uh, the evaluation. Yeah. What what this does? It it searches for an object with that name, and and that's like. Yeah, uh, you, you shouldn't do it because in the function you should be contained more or less. So you you what what R does, it looks outside of the function because it cannot find this name inside the function environment and then picks right. the first first best object with that name outside of the function. That makes sense. But then I don't I can't think of an alternative because I have like, you but, know, like but, 10 but different why, things I have to pull. Yeah, but why don't you uh, throw in not the, the string as name, but the actual list? Um, yeah, can you not just do names list and pull that names out as a character vector? No, I, I think what, what the whole code does, it, it's it's simply pulling um it, it um um I make a short example what your code does. Yeah, it, it's really just pulling in a bunch of and it's like running. So I have two nested maps and I'm essentially just I have to pull a bunch of information for 16 different counties across New York and it just seemed like easier in my brain to do this way. So I, I posted in the chat how that uh, function looks, what you are doing currently. And that makes probably more sense if, if you run it yourself. Function. And okay, so this is what you. Yeah, so you're saying create a new function that just evaluates? No, I say don't do that stuff. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> why do you want to have it there? Like I said, I, I'm unsure why you don't simply draw in the object in the function. The, the, yeah, the, the list itself? Yeah. Because then I would have to create a, okay, so because I'm, I'm passing into a map. And then map takes in either a list or a vector. I will no, I guess I could have a list of lists. I don't know. Uh, so, so you're <laughs> mapping over a list of name of objects. Yeah, so I would have to, to do what you're suggesting, I would have to so I defined all of these things, all these variables, like the specific variables that I want. Each of these things are holding numbers. And then I would have had to, I, oh, yeah, he, I could, he, I could, I could simply here just do uh, our yeah, 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 and no, change no, this to I, list. I, I get it. Here, here you're doing that. Yeah. Okay. So here yeah, have, I have to pass yeah. it in for map. Okay, no, that makes sense, yeah. But no, you're right also. I think in theory, I could do, you know, list, I could, this could be like var ls and then make this a list and then unquote all of these things. Yeah, and have a yeah. list of lists. And then I probably don't even have to do this line. Um, but, Seeing as we're here, I can always play with that later because that makes sense to me. But seeing as we're here, what is the appropriate way to do this? Thing is, I've already done it. it. Would this work? So if I if I did bang bang of med 
Inc. So Med Inc. as a string, is this going to give me a list? No, it's just going to give me a string. Maybe without the quotes. Oh. Okay. So now that's giving you your list. But that's not how it's going to get passed into my function. So I, I, I right. in its current state, a vet character vector gets passed into my function. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, like 75% of understanding this. So, you know, what you just ran there gives the same output as running it without the double curlies, because exactly. it's exactly like, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, there's like a point where so, yeah, that's, that's what I don't get about it. The double curly is like they do and they undo something in the same operation, but in a way that like here makes no difference. But when you're using it in, you know, putting it into where you need to, you know, pass something in unevaluated, then it does make a difference. I don't know. I'm... Um, so I would have to do N, N quote. End quote, unquote. Substitute response is true for the value expression. Uh, I, I would say your code is more or less the correct way, and there's no different way to do it in this way. The only thing I, I would do different is I would uh, not do it as name, but as symbol, because a symbol reflects a variable, an object name. Yeah. And then you and then you evaluate the symbol. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've never, I've always like, because I've never been so comfortable with. Yeah. So in the chat, G1 also mentioned the symbol. So I, I would do it also like this or less. Oh, as a symbol, then as a name. Uh, this, that name stuff, I, I think hardly mentioned it. I, I don't know if it wasn't that chapter, but a name is actually not the correct one. What is the difference between a name and a symbol now? I'm confused. A name, also known as a symbol, is the same. They're identical. It's just an attempt to coerce the argument to a name. So merely switching out uh, as that name to symbol is the same thing. But sum is from R lang and that's base. So I mean, it doesn't matter. You said it's from R lang? Oh. There's multiple ones. Get it? Okay, create the whole thing. Huh, okay. So what if I did, and then you would eval. But I, I don't think that's anything better than your code does. Yeah. <laughs> then, so. Just to understand what's going on, this makes a lot more sense. So you're turning the text string medink into the symbol medink, which then is a symbol for the list that you have, or a name for the list, because yeah. names and symbols are the same. Yeah. Yeah, that suddenly makes more sense to me. Close, and then, okay, but then, and so we were just talking about what it, I'm just like spitballing here. So if I had 
now that it's a symbol, could I use like XPR? Expert, expert. Okay, so what's the difference between a, a, a symbol or a name and an expression? This is my glossary that I want. I, this is I have no idea. A, 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 sim, a symbol is a data type inside an expression. Okay. A, an expression can be a constant, which is um, fixed, so nothing variable. An expression can be um, a function, I think. And inside the expression, expression you can have a symbol with which references to an object. That's that's in the tree which which Mariella showed us. You have different colors and shapes for these types of um, data types inside expressions. So I'm I'm kind of like I've got in my head I've got that a, a, a expression is anything that can be evaluated, but then that doesn't differentiate between. So when you're and a symbol, yeah, like so when you evaluate a symbol, you know, so evaluating the symbol med ink return it points you to that list. Mm -hmm. But then, so like so, what you're typing there that you're you're turning this into an expression. What's the difference between the symbol med ink and the expression med ink? I guess it's I back know. to the original. Yeah. I mean, nothing if the expression that's only that. captures the symbol. That's it. OK, so maybe it's like a, um, so like if we said, you know, um, so medink plus another list name is an expression, but it's not a symbol because it's a combination of multiple symbols. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With, with an operator, which is, isn't, I mean, an operator is also a symbol for the function that the operator is. <laughs> yeah, but um, what what I don't like about that function is because you are inside the function, you're quoting outside of it. I, I, I hope that makes sense why I don't like that because you are in a different environment. And as we learned in previous chapters, a function should always be um, more or less yeah. encapsulated. Yeah. Um, to, to work around this, you could already uh, evalu evaluate the string when you are calling the function. Would be so in the in the map. Mm. Yeah, you call the map. You could already evaluate the, uh, your string as symbol mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. throw it that inside the function. It it moves the problem only to a different location. But um, for, for, for me, the positive effect would be that your the function can be used in any file, any um, yeah. project. In in your case, it all, always thinks that in the global object there must be, there is the same stuff. So what I yeah. would do is in the map function evaluate already the list. I get you one hundred percent. That would make sense, or just make sure, or just make this a um, keep them as lists and just yeah, pass yeah, the but, list so I have but, no. But you can keep this. that. Yeah, you you can keep. I I would simply evaluate inside your map. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, I guess my original question is inconclusive. At this point. <laughs> Because this this makes sense to me. The symbol makes sense to me. It just produces this. It produces the same thing. I, I don't see any advantage of using symbol over name. That's not identical. It's the same. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay, I'm gonna beat on this. If I find a if I find a um a solution, I'll post in the chat. And I already told Sham actually all upcoming chapters more or less talking, uh, repeating themselves. So if the whole concept is still a little bit uh, dodgy to you guys, we will hear it 
again next week from me and then again 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 so so hardly really does a, a slow slow one on this one yeah and i see it's hard yeah um, maybe it will sink in with this low lawlessness <laughs> yeah maybe we should actually so actually keep a working um page glossary like brett keeps mentioning let's like create a google doc of like by the way guys for future cohort we've been in this particular module we've got working glossary because i can't keep track of the differences between all these words Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I know. I'm like, I'm even. I'm, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead ass. Like ex, ex for, like I'm constantly end quote, quote, closure. All these words. For I'll forget them tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My my uh, mode of working with this stuff up until now has been to look at a blog post try the stuff, have it blow up on me like nine times, and then finally find something that works, not understand why it works, but then replicate it in, in the next time I you know, try okay. to program with the flyer. Yeah. I don't really fully understand how this works, but it just works. That's OK. That's, yeah. I think, acceptable. And, and then the next problem, which I run into it, is with the double curly bracelet. I, I used it a lot. And then you are using a different function out of a different uh, universe, more or less, that don't work. So the double curly bracelet more or less only works in specific uh, dataverse function. Yeah, that's that definitely falls under that list of things that I see and I'm like, oh, okay, cool, that works here. But then I'll try it somewhere else and not understand why it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's something that would. I don't know the the base and tidy receipt the system. Fight. Okay. Not just even with curly braces, just with regular functions that aren't vectorized, and you have to find a different way to use them. Well, we're, oh, with, with the, yeah, with the basic GLM function. All right. Tiny models. <laughs> the, tiny models. Ne never touch it. <laughs> it's okay, it's time. <laughs> if you want to do this fancy stuff. Yeah, today is a good discussion. Many stuff, a symbol, a lot of things that I haven't had before. Yeah, so um, I have a lot of readings after this session to go and dig. I know. Yeah, to read them. This is why I picked the evaluation chapter, Sham. When you asked me, I was like, I will do evaluation because I need to get this in my brain, which I'm still behind. I'm still behind. I haven't caught up. I have to, I have to get caught up on S3, S4, R6. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Entire section. <laughs> but yeah. We'll get to it. Okay. I, I think we are up to the time. Um, yep. Uh, so um, if we have reached to the end of the discussion, and I think we can meet next week or. All right. Thanks, everyone. All okay. right. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye.